Hello everyone, it's me Shanti and you are watching Biology Nowadays. In this video, let's discuss about prions, the proteinaceous infectious particles that cause serious progressive neurodegenerative disorders which affect both humans and animals. Let's start with the discovery of prions. Nearly 40 years back, an American neurologist and biochemist, Stanley B. Prusiner, was in search for the causative agent of scrappy disease in sheep. Scrappy is a very serious degenerative disease affecting the nervous system of sheep and goats. The name Scrappy is derived from one of the clinical signs of the condition wherein affected animals will compulsively scrape off their fleeces against rocks, trees or fences. Dr. Prusiner was expecting a virus to be the causative agent of Scrappy. But to his surprise, instead of a virus, he found small proteinaceous infectious particles. They were smaller than viruses. Since they were mainly proteins, he called them prions. That's how it is pronounced and not as prions. Actually, the word prion is the short form for proteinaceous infectious particles. Pro from the word proteinaceous and in from the word infectious. But then it should be proins instead of prions, right? Prusiner once told that as proin didn't sound right for him, he just flipped two letters and then became prions. An interesting feature about prions is that unlike the normal pathogens like viruses, viroids, bacteria, fungi or other parasites, prions don't have any nucleic acids like DNA or RNA. Yes, they are just proteins without any cellular structures, not even nucleic acids. That means not living, right? That's the reason why they are not included in Bittaker's classification system. Actually, prions are just abnormally folded or misfolded form of a normally harmless protein found most abundantly in the brain. But interestingly, when these abnormally folded harmful proteins come in contact with a normal protein of its own kind, the normal protein will get converted into the abnormally folded harmful form. This means that prions can multiply themselves even without any genetic material. That's almost unbelievable, right? Even Prusiner couldn't believe his own results at first. So he confirmed his results about prions several times and finally published them in the topmost journal called Science in 1982. Soon, he faced a lot of criticisms because the role of prions proposed by Prusiner was in contrast to all other infectious agents known until then, like viruses, viroids, bacteria, fungi, and parasites. All of them contain nucleic acids, but later, more and more evidences came up supporting Prusiner's work. In 1997, he was awarded a Nobel Prize in Medicine for his discovery of an entirely new group of disease-causing agents, prions. Actually, I was in high school then and I still remember that newspaper with this news. However, at that time, I didn't understand much about prions. But now, let's discuss about prions in detail. As I mentioned earlier, when these abnormally folded harmful prion proteins come in contact with a normal protein of its own kind, the normal protein gets converted into the abnormally folded harmful form. In this way, they multiply inside the brain. They are even resistant to protease activity because of their abnormal shape. By the way, proteases are enzymes that break down proteins. So these misfolded proteins accumulate within neurons, eventually killing the neurons. This damage leads to the formation of tiny holes in the brain tissue. This makes the brain tissue appear sponge-like under a microscope. Because of this, prion diseases are often referred to as spongiform encephalopathies. Prion diseases or transmissible spongiform encephalopathies are a family of rare progressive neurodegenerative disorders that affect both humans and animals. Some of them include scrapie in sheep, chronic wasting disease in deer, by the way, this disease gets its name from the drastic weight loss observed in infected animals. Then bovine spongiform encephalopathy in cattle, 
commonly known as mad cow disease and its analogous variant or similar variant Creutzfeldt Jakob disease in humans. Another disease caused by prions is Kuru, found among the people of Fort tribe in New Guinea. This is a boy affected with Kuru. As you see here, he cannot sit or stand without help. These people of Fort tribe practiced a form of cannibalism in which they ate the cooked brains of dead people. This strange activity was a part of the funeral ritual. They believed that this activity will help to free the spirit of the dead. But you should keep in mind that prions cannot be destroyed even by cooking. So what if the dead person had a prion disease? When these people eat the prion infected brain of that dead person, they will also get infected. That's how Kuru spread among the four people of New Guinea. All these prion diseases are usually rapidly progressive and always fatal. That is, they eventually lead to death of the infected organism. Prions can occur spontaneously or through infections from eating infected meat products or through mutations in the gene that encodes this particular prion protein. That's all about prions. I hope you got a nice idea about prions and how deadly they can be. Also, don't forget to check out the playlist on biological classification. The link will be given in the description box below. If you find this video helpful, hit the like button because it will be a great motivation for me. And also don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more biology videos.